You can walk by with a cast on and say surgery went well. Can you tell us what, what happened? unavailable. That's all I'm allowed to say about everybody. So. Okay, so you're going to be uh, unavailable for many weeks now? I don't have that answer to you for you, so he's unavailable today. Okay, you, can you tell us what happened? Nope, he's unavailable. What about uh, Mike Martinez we saw on a scooter, obviously didn't play. What's his status? We'll see what he can do today, and then uh, we'll make a decision on everybody on Friday. So is he, is he practicing today? We'll see what he can do today. Okay. Uh, there's a big game this weekend in high school football, St. John Bosco, modern day. Are you going to go to that? We've already been to those schools. So we only allowed once to go to the school during the evaluation period. You can only go to one school one time? You can only go to a school once. So we've already okay. been there for our evaluations. Okay. You didn't want to pick that one strategically? We go to practice because you can see more players in practice. Okay. Uh, you made a change. At, I know you don't probably don't care about starter versus coming off the bench, but uh, Charbonnet was a starting running back. Was there a reason for that? It may have been the play call. So okay. Those guys rotate. Deshaun does a great job rotating, keeping those guys fresh. So it could have been the play call to start the game if that was. Um, we actually had two running backs in on the first play, so they were both starters. So, so a receiver got taken out on that play. So we actually started with two running backs on that series because that's what the play call dictated. So, so they were both technically starters by that rule. We've yeah. seen players in black jerseys. What do those indicate? Black jerseys. Black shirt. We saw Fernier and uh, Maranta on Monday. That's what they, those are their t-shirts that they wear under the pads. That's just a t-shirt, it's not a jersey. Okay. So they're, all of their t-shirts are numbered. So if we ever come out in just shorts and t-shirts that they have a number on them. So that doesn't They didn't have any blue jerseys, so we have black for offense and white for defense. Doesn't mean just a t-shirt. Okay. Doesn't indicate long-term injury? No. What's it's like CSI, Los Angeles. Holy smokes. Actually, I saw a kid with one white sock and one black sock. So that's a, but I can't tell you what that formula is for you. Does that mean Dolphins do you think? No. Yeah, he plays both sides of the ball. That's, that's a good point. Yesterday, Herm Edwards uh, referred to your offense as eye candy. And he meant that in a complimentary way. He said defenders get, get caught watching all the shifts, watching all the movement, and it kind of lulls them into into where they are. Are you happy with where the offense is right now in its production? No, I mean, I, th I think you're, you're always pleased with where you are, but you, I mean, you're, you're always pleased, but you're not satisfied. I think we can do better. We left, I think we left a lot on the bone um, against Stanford. We, we could have executed better in certain situations. I could have called better plays in certain situations. So after every game, you know, you're always going to say, what, what could we have done better? And then when you look at the film, there is, you know, there's, there's coaching points that you can make, there's execution points that you can make. So, um, you know, I'm pleased with the effort. And that's the one thing we talk to our players about all the time is, is the effort that we play. And I think our group plays in all phases. They play really hard, um, but there's still always correctable things you can do. And as we say all the time, our week is we prepare, then we compete, and then we learn, you know. And so when we get to the film immediately after, you know, for the coaches when we're on a away game, we watch the film on the plane. So. You know, you can come down from a very high win after watching the film. So by the time you land, you're like, hey, we got to fix this. we got to fix this. What if we tweak this? What if we did that? So that's part of the process. But um, I've been pleased in every game we've played so far with our effort. Um, and that's the one thing that I think our players can control. But we're always striving to, for improvement. We're always striving to get better. So. What does yeah. it say about uh, sorry, uh, the, the ceiling and potential of your offense? And you're leaving points on the board, but you're still scoring 38 a game. Yeah, again, it's it's all cyclical in terms of what is each week for us. So we break down, you know, it's, it's again, it's about the process and it's about having a really good Wednesday. So in some games, we're going to have to score a lot of points. Um, that's just how the game kind of unfolds. In other games, it's going to be a rock fight, you know, and maybe a 17-14 final. Um, and as long as you do enough to end up on the right side of the ledger, then it's a productive day. But no matter what you do offensively or defensively, you can always improve upon that. And that's what I think. We have a bunch of guys that are hungry like that too. I think they're lifelong learners and they enjoy the X and O part of it and how we can, hey, if we did this, we actually could have been a little bit better even though we scored 38, you know what I mean? We could have scored 48, you know what I mean? That's, that's part of the process. They're leading the uh, Pac-12 in rushing yards per game. What makes their rushing game so effective? Well, they got two solid running backs. Um, and I think they've also, Herm's made a decision to run the ball. Um, they're more multi-tight end. I think when he first got there, they were more of a spread team. Um, they changed that when they brought in the coordinator from Boise. You know, they're more of a multiple tight end team. Um, they've made more of a conscious decision to run the ball. So part of their rushing numbers going up is their rushing attempts have gone up. I, would, I don't have them offhand, but if you look at what they ran when they were a spread team rushing numbers compared to what they are now, 
Um, I think there's, there's obviously more attempts from that standpoint, but it's a conscious effort that, that they're going to try to run the ball, and that's going to be a real test for you know, our front seven. Watching Jaden and uh, watching the Arizona State game, it looks like he's at his most dangerous when the runs are impromptu. When, when they're not designed runs, you know, but he's sitting back in the pocket yeah. and then he, then he decides to take off. I mean, that's one of his skill sets, you know, in, in a lot like some of those great quarterbacks at the, at the next level, you know, the Patrick Mahomes and the Russell Wilsons of the world, the Lamar Jacksons, it's the unscheduled ones um, that can really hurt you because it's, it may be a called pass play. So everybody's in coverage and matched up with whoever they're matched up with and they may have five receivers out into the pattern. And then if the rushing lanes break down or the containment of the rush breaks down, then he's really dangerous, and, that, and that's a really good point because that's that's where he is at his best because he is such a, a quality athlete um, that you got to make sure you know where he is all the time. And I think part of it is our our D line being really disciplined in the rush lanes against someone like this. Are you guys still getting COVID testing? Um, yeah, on Mondays. On Mondays, okay. Yeah. Not everybody. I think the kids that aren't vaccinated that had the waivers are definitely are they're tested twice a week, um, and then there's uh, there is testing for kids that want it on Mondays. Okay. We had the opportunity to talk to Kenny Churchwell the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, was he smiling? Yeah, <laughs> yes, he was. He's always it. smiling. I love Kenny smiling. And for him, uh, he talked about you know opting out last year. Um, how great was it for him to kind of come back and be involved in the defense the way you had? It him? was awesome. You know, we were hopeful that he would come back. You know, we respected his decision. Um, you know, COVID affected a lot of people in this this country. Um, it was a personal decision, but that we supported 100. percent We were in constant contact with him. Um, Coach has talked to him a lot. Um, no, we talked to him a lot. We, we kept in contact with him, and then we were so excited when you know the, the, this season arrived. When Kenny said he wanted to come back, you know, we welcomed him with open arms, and he's been a, it's been really good to see. You know, because when you're missing your football, there's a there's a lot of snaps that the other guys have gotten that you haven't gotten. Um, but to jump back into it the way he has, uh, we were conscious to ease him back into it. I think KB did a really good job with him in the summertime of just getting him ready to, to prepare and play at a football speed. You know, to see him make the pick in the Fresno game and then to see you know, the quality snaps that he got against Stanford. Um, and he's just scratching the surface, you know, because he is a, a year separated from some of those other guys from an experience standpoint, but he's a talented player. Um, you know, was really pushing for playing time as a true freshman here, but then tore his ACL. So he's had some, you know, he's faced some situations that have been difficult for him, but for him to bounce back and do what he's doing now, he couldn't be more proud of him. So. Individually, what do John Gaines and Duke Clemens bring to the center position? Um, they're both really athletic. Uh, both are really smart. Um, I think all three kids that have played center for us, Sam, Duke, and John, um, our center calls our fronts. Our center calls our uh, calls out our blocking schemes. He's kind of the quarterback of the offensive line. And um, all three of the guys, uh, Sam, Duke, and John, have that ability. Uh, they're students of the game. They really you know, are kind of an extension of Coach Fry in terms of what they're doing up front. Um, and, and the other thing is, is – Duke and John specifically are really athletic so that you can do some different things schematically. You know, not, not many teams can pull a center. We can pull a center with those two guys because um, they've also played a ton of football at guard for us. So um, we have the ability to, to, to pull both those guys, whether they're at guard or whether they're at center. But that's something that stands out with both those guys is their athleticism. You talked about liking afternoon games. Now you've got two 7.30 starts back to back. Do you, I mean, just not personal preference, but does that hurt recruiting particularly on the East Coast? Yeah, I mean, I, all those things end up being in the fall. I got to put them in a category, so I put them in a, they're all TBUs because we have no say in when we play. Um, you know, we can say, hey, we wish we played at this time. Um, but when a whole factor of the country doesn't get a chance to see you play, that has to factor in. Now, I'm a firm believer Christian McCaffrey did not win the Heisman Trophy because they played so many night games. I mean, you look at his numbers. He had 500 more yards than Barry Sanders. He's the all-time all-purpose player in college football history, yet didn't win the Heisman Trophy. To me, it was because of lack of exposure. So, you know, and, and I think everybody understands that. I don't, I don't have the solution to it, um, nor am I asked the solution to it. So, they tell us when we play, we play. They tell us we're going to play in lot eight at six a.m. We're going to play in lot eight. <laughs> Last year, they told us forty-three hours before Cal, you're not playing Utah. You're going to play Cal, and it's going to be at nine a.m. in front of no fans in the Rose Bowl. All right, we'll get our team ready and we'll go play. So. Wasn't the solution just for the Pac-12 commissioner to, to say we're and that's not going to do above that? my pay grade, yeah. so I don't, I don't, I'm not going to ever tell the Pac-12 commissioner what he should and shouldn't do. That's you do that, Ben. Okay, <laughs> I will. Give him a call and you have a chat with him. That's not, that's not me. They tell us when to play, we play. You know, and for, again, I, that's not a big deal to me. I have a personal preference. I think college football should be played in the afternoon. The NFL is played in the afternoon. There's one night game in the National Football League on Sunday night. The rest of the games are all in the afternoon. They all play at the same time. 
So the whole, we don't want to play certain games at certain times, that's the part I don't understand. Play them on, and then the fans decide what game they want to watch. That's that's their choice. That's a great part of being American. You get to pick the game you want to think. But to not have people watch a game just because they're, they're sleeping and they're tired. I lived on the East Coast. I didn't get a chance to watch a lot of Pac-12. I had friends coaching in games. When I was in the NFL, I never watched a 10:30 West East Coast Pac-12 game. And I love football, and I didn't stay up and watch it. So. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.